Good East Positioning Center, buddy. The name is Bufang, and, uh, oh, wait, welcome to my next ranking video. Yeah, did not expect this to, the ranking videos to get followed, Batman to get followed up with Pirates of the Caribbean, but here we are. Uh, yeah, this is the most recent movie franchise that I have watched, and figuring that I have new op opinions on these movies, um, uh, I figured I'd explain them in my ranking of video. video. Uh, I would also like to mention this may or may not become its own Hunger Games simulator episode. I don't know. It probably seems most fitting and appropriate. Actually, you know what? Screw that. This is going to be the next Hunger Games episode, Pirates of the Caribbean. But, um, yeah. Unlike the Batman episode, there really aren't a whole lot of debates as to what counts as a Pirates movie, as we just have straight up five of these, and there are five to go over. So that's exactly what we will be doing. We will be reviewing the five Pirates of the Caribbean movies. So let us... St I also know, unlike last time with Batman, there were just some general opinions. I also know that with this one, I drastically went against the grain here. Here with my opinion. So please be civil and about your disagreements in the comments. But with this all being said in mind, that is the intro stuff out of the way. So let's begin with our number five, Dead Men Tell No Tales. Possibly the only cold take on this list. Dead Men Tell No Tales is universally regarded to be the worst Pirates of the Caribbean movie, and upon seeing it again, I absolutely can agree. Let's go over the things. Jack is too incompetent. I understand that there's a that in the Pirates of the Caribbean movies there is a level of drunk incompetency that follows this character, but not, never to this extent. Jack always felt like he knew what was going on in the movies, even in his most incompetent film. He always felt like he knew what was going on. Uh, Barbosa being selfless? Really? Barbosa is a pirate through and through. He's a deal maker trying to get ahead in life. Life at the cost of someone else's misery. He always does that. Like, really? Come on now. Why? Why make Barbosa selfless? That's like the one thing he do can't, doesn't do. And Gibbs having no loyalty. You're really just taking away these characters' main traits and just bastardizing them, for a lack of better terms. And can we also say right here, Henry and Karina literally serve no purpose to the story and could have easily been replaced and could have been replaced with Will Turner and Elizabeth Swan. You might have to work around with Will not being able to touch land thing, sure, but remember, there's perfectly good motivation to go after the Trident still. Will wants to break his curse of the Dutchman, that's perfectly good motivation. And you can easily have Elizabeth Swan say that over the years she has been searching for a way to destroy the curse. Curse, that's an easy motivation to go pick up Jack. These two characters have literally no purpose, and you could have replaced it with better characters. Although I will say, however, in this movie's defense, I know a lot of people might not agree with me, but Salazar is a pretty cool villain. He's nowhere near the best. I mean, I think he's just better than Lord Beckett, but that's not a high bar. But still, of all the characters, he actually is a very interesting one, and I have to give him that. If there's any character here who actually tried to be interesting, it was Salazar. But nevertheless, Dead Men Tell No Tales is a bad movie, and I wish that this movie told no tales. But anyways, moving on to number four. This take is going to kill me, but the fourth... But of the good Pirates of the Caribbean movies, number four is At World's End. Oh boy. For what is many people's number one... I know this franchise is very similar to Indiana Jones in that it's a common debate between the first and the third movie about which is best in the franchise. And seeing the third movie this low, especially behind what many people consider to be the other bad one, is bound to tick some people off. So let me so let me get my defense up and ready here. First off, first off, this is a cool finale, the most iconic finale, and probably the most iconic set piece in all of Pirates of the Caribbean. I absolutely have to agree on that front. That is great. Um, and as this series will go on to say, 
Jack and Barbosa are easily this franchise's best written characters. Jack and Barbosa do so much good for this franchise, and that's another reason Dead Men Tell No Tales is so low, because Jack and Barbosa are like the carriers of these films. Everyone knows Jack, but no one knows Barbosa to be like Jack's serious half. Those two carry every film they're in. And I do like the allegiances in this movie. You never truly know. Everyone here truly feels like a pirate. And just that their allegiances are changing a lot to what they want all the time. Which is definitely a good feeling and cool for a pirate's movie. I do feel that Will and Elizabeth are handled weirdly. Like they're trying to be puppet masters when they're not capable of that. Like at all. And on top of that, just how... Like, why? Why are you doing this? I don't know how they do it. And let's be honest here. Beckett ruins Davy Jones. I did not... I know that in this franchise, Beckett and Davy Jones were set up as the villains. But we can all be honest here when we say Davy Jones is a far cooler antagonist than Beckett ever was. Which is why it's so disappointing to see Beckett as the main threat now. And the Master Manipulator. And again, aside from Will and Elizabeth just being handled weirdly, like, something about them just feels written off. Certainly feel like they would have had more allegiances, more loyalty in their allegiance than they actually do, but... Eh. What can you say? At World's End is certainly a good movie. I just think that the three above it are better. And I know that a lot of people are pissed about one of the three. And they're only going to get more pissed when we find out that number three is Curse of the Black Pearl. Yes, the OG is at number three. The two commonly regarded for the best aren't even aren't even close to the number one spot. So let's go over the Curse of the Black Pearl. First off, Jack is a good protagonist. Jack is less of an idiot. I like these movies where Jack has competency. Competency is key. He can be a drunken idiot, sure, but he also needs to be competent and know what's going on as a com- as a protagonist. And that is what something he does. He excels at here and in another movie later on too. I think in At World's End it's fine, although he does seem a little less competent. Competent. Jack and Barbosa is a very interesting game of cat and mouse, and again proves why this is the de- best dynamic in the series. Jack and Barbosa are so great, even though. Despite, ironically enough, what's going to come next. Um, Will can be an idiot, but he's like the naive, good-hearted idiot. And that's like a good thing, because considering his character right now, which is another thing that I feel is, feels like really good. You need to have that pure-hearted soul. Jack has portrayed someone as more as like, he's, he's he knows these waters. He knows some things that you need to do. And Will is just portrayed as like a, come on, man, I can do it. I'm a good guy and trying to do everything by the books when you can't do this by the books. Curse of the Black Pearl is a great first movie to this franchise. But in my opinion, these next two movies just have more for me in them. In them than they do others. Which leads me to number two. And what's going to piss you off even more if you know the power of elimination is Dead Man's Chest. First off, let's go over something. I like the bonds between Will and Bill. That is nice, and I do like the father versus son aspect. I guess it does kind of explain what he does in At World's End, but I certainly think his love for Elizabeth would over, would triumph that. Davy Jones is an actually intimidating threat, and another reason why I don't like At World's End so much. This movie is Davy Jones's movie, and damn does he take advantage of it. Uh, Norrington, despite being a major character in these first two movies, this is the first movie where he actually felt interesting, despite being major in the first one. And Gibbs, again, despite being a, a relatively major character in the first movie, actually has some importance in this one, and this one is the one that I feel is the best. Now, even though this movie does come with the least amount of, does not come with Jack and Barbosa going on each other because the events of the last movie makes it think that Barbosa is dead. 
Something that I do have to like here is Jack's desperation to get out of this. How far Jack is willing to go to stay away from the Kraken. From everything Davy Jones has to offer. It really does help you think like, oh yeah, how did Jack obtain his reputation? And this is why. Even though At World's End kind of ruins it by saying he just took down a pirate hunter, I personally like to believe he got his power from the deal what he made with Davy Jones. And I think that's what everyone means. Dead Man's Chest for a while was looking so close to being the number one movie here, but it got beat by the thing that's going to get me killed, the number one, my personal opinion, best Pirates of the Caribbean movie, On Stranger Tides. Oh boy. Oh boy. Um... First off, let's get the obvious out of the way. Jack, the Jack and Barbosa duo, as I will say, met, as I have said before on this list many times, and I will say it again, Jack and Barbosa are easily the best duo in Pirates of the Caribbean, and that will always remain true throughout the series. Unlike the last movie where allegiances were like changed around a whole lot, I do kind of like how allegiances here are played out simple. Jack is just after what he needs. Angelica's with her father, and Barbosa joins up with Jack because he's trying to get after Blackbeard. They don't betray each other, and that's cool, and I like that simplicity. Something that On Stranger Tides does that I'm actually really do liking here is they go back to kind of is that they kind of go back to the Black Pearl with Jack's competence, where he's now a lot more competent, overly competent, and so, and that's a good thing. Again, I want the comedic relief character to be aware of what's going on. I like Angelica and Blackbeard. They're a good duo done together. And I do kind of like the Angelica Jack thing, where that was an actual love interest for Jack, and he has remorse for it. It's a side of his character we don't get to see, but not an unbelievable side. And finally, I feel like this one is a grand adventure. I don't know if it's just because me and I like my grand adventures, but I do like that aspect. And that's possibly why On Stranger Tides ends up being my number one favorite movie in this franchise. Yes, I didn't believe it when I thought it to saw it either. I dreaded getting to this movie and thought that Dead Man's Chest was going to be number one. But no, no, it was this. And this surprised the crap out of me. But in a good way. And it made me excited to watch Dead Men Tell No Tales, which utterly disappointed me and lived up to the internet rep reputation. Anyway... This is my ranking of all the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. For a reminder, number five was Dead, Dead Men Tell No Tales. Number four was At World's End. Three was Curse of the Black Pearl. Two was Dead Man's Chest. And number one, what we're staying at right now, is On Stranger Tides. With that all being said in mind, uh, I hope you all had a good time. Please, again, keep your disputes about this list civil in the comments. And, oh boy, I'm going to get marooned for this. So, with this all being said in mind, I bid you all a good west positioning of the summer, everybody. The name is Blue Fang, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.